I simply did not have the self-awareness to realize that any of this might be interpreted as, as gay. And I actually don't think that originally Jesse was written as a gay character. I think it's something that happened along the line by serendipity. I also had not the slightest idea that one of my lead actors was gay. The fact that Mark Patton was an openly gay actor, I don't think had been uh, revealed at that time yet. We made Nightmare 2 absolutely clueless that it had any gay overtones whatsoever. I'm absolutely sure there's not one moment that I remember that it was discussed. I never saw it. I didn't get it. When I was shooting, I had no notion that this was happening, although I didn't get a blowjob on the set. That's what you mean. But looking back, it was so gay. It was amazing. If you're called the homo nightmare on Elm Street on the net by a million prepubescent boys, then, then a bunch of grown men had to know what they're doing. All I can say is we were all incredibly naive or all incredibly latently gay. I'm not sure which. But I do think it remains like one of the most sort of debated movies of all time because it's so, it's not even under the surface, it's so there. You know, we've always pussyfooted around this. Look, I, I it was supposed to be subtext, all right? It really was. David Chaskin, without a doubt, knew what he was writing. You have to remember again, this was the 1980s. This was post-AIDS. People were really out a lot then. I mean, maybe not in Kansas, but certainly on both coasts. And I started thinking about uh, guys being like unsure of their sexuality. And I thought, well, that's pretty scary. David said that, I am astounded because I certainly didn't get it either. There was so much like S&M and uh, this really precarious relationship between Mark Patton and I throughout the movie. Uh, you know, this is probably the top gun of franchise horror films. I, I, I kind of think there was this, this subliminal thing that was going on in Jack's mind where he didn't really realize it, but <laughs> everything he did amplified it. You have a board game named Probe on it. He has a sign on the door that says, no chicks allowed. The production designer in the film was gay. And I think it became like an inside joke, which they thought nobody would really pick up on. But in terms of the, the kinky gimmick of, of part two, I think it was really, it's really interesting. Freddy appeals to that, that gay part that's like the questions. He, he appeals to, to the questions that Jesse's asking himself. Freddy could represent the self-hatred, you know, in, in the gay community. He could also represent just the, the, just the taunt. You son of a bitch! I think that Mark gave a really great performance because there were so many levels of his insecurities. And I think that's what I was doing in Nightmare on Elm Street, is uh, I was revealing who I really was. And I think that came clearly through the, the screen. The gayest thing in the movie, by the way, is Bob Shea himself. Bob Shea has always been a slightly frustrated actor. He had wanted to play the father of Robert Rustler. I said, I need a real actor to play that role. Bob, Bob got very offended by that. And uh, at one point, he even threatened to fire me. Jack could end up being a, a jerk from time to time, and that was one of his jerkier uh, episodes. I said, well, let me let me give you another role. So I thought, hey, you know, I'll put him in this gay bar. Jack said, go to the uh, uh, pleasure chest and get yourself an outfit. So I went to the pleasure chest, and I happened to have my two young daughters with me who were like 10 and 12 at the time. The guy who was, who was the clerk was watching, and my, my little daughter said, oh, there's a great thing to put on your arms with, with spikes and stuff, and, and this is, and here's a great T-shirt for you, Papa, and stuff like that. So the clerk comes over to me and said, uh, I think these children should wait, <laughs> wait outside while you purchase what you're going to be purchasing. Bob Shea looked darling in his leather costume as the bartender. He was so sweet. And I want you to know that we all believed him. Mm. And then you have uh, Coach Schneider's character. He liked the character of Jesse had some secrets. And I don't think Coach Snyder was ever a very good guy. I did direct a lot of the shower scene with Marshall Bell, and wow, what was I thinking? The coach's balls being part of the attack, I'm, I'm trying to think through whether or not there was something Freudian about that. 
I love that scene in the movie. I mean, I, um, I don't care for Marshall Bell's ass so much. Uh, I don't think it was my idea to snap Marshall's bare ass with towels. It's what I would have liked to have seen happen to my phys ed teacher in school. You get what you give in life. And Coach Snyder was really good at giving, and he wasn't really great at receiving. Read into it what you will, but I just thought it was a horror scene, which really makes me feel stupid. If there was one thing that I could delete from my filmography in my entire life, it would be that dance scene in my bedroom. I actually find that scene a little bit embarrassing. It, Risky Business had had this very successful scene with Tom Cruise. We were just riffing on that particular pop culture deal. With some really uncool dance moves. Mark didn't want to do it. And Mark kept kind of postponing it. And finally, when it came time, as we were getting close to doing the scene, he said, look, I've got it all worked out. Just roll the cameras and let it go, and I'll give you a whole performance. And I'm going, oh, gosh. <laughs> this is not what I had in mind. I, I understand that the video was played in the in gay clubs a lot. It'll go on forever and ever and ever, and my butt will be bouncing, and I have that horrible hair and those hideous glasses. And again, it was a choice. It was another one of those choices that really brought the subtext way up right in your face. When the, the shit hits the fan, Jesse rejects his girlfriend to go and stay at the house with the best friend. I need you to let me stay here tonight. Are you out of your mind? I can't believe that this particular line is written this way. Something is trying to get inside my body, and you want to sleep with me. Sounds like, you know, and you want to sleep with me. <laughs> and then at that point, I realized, you know, a lot of people are going to go down this road with these, these two boys.